Welcome to Coffee Talks, a Pokemon card collecting podcast featuring David Person, owner of the world's most complete English Pokemon card collection, and Dan Norton, a longtime collector with all the knowledge behind the cards. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's another week. It's another Coffee Talks with myself and David. David, how's everything going? Dan. Wow. Right into it this week. Dan, I'm questioning everything right now. Everything. I don't know what I'm thinking, but everything is a question. And so I'm probably going to have several questions for you today as we get going on with this thing called, what do we call this now? Coffee talk? Yep. Still coffee talks. Still your name. Still don't know why you named it that. I don't know myself, Dan. I did forget the coffee though. I don't drink coffee. I wish I did. Why would I wish I did? I don't care if I do or don't. I do drink tea and I don't have any in it. And folks that are worried if I drink coffee or tea and I have eight kids, am I Mormon? No, I'm not Mormon. I get asked a lot. Go ahead, Dan. What's up today? Uh, not too much is up with me today. We've had a pretty busy weekend. Me and Laura, we were running our local League Cups and Challenges yesterday. So we've had that on. Dan, are there prizes for a League Cup Challenge? Remember in the old days, there was like a first, second, third, fourth, and you Get these prizes. And I got a few of those things tucked away, league cups or whatever. Were they called league cups? Or is there anything like that anymore, Dan? Uh, so there are prizes. The only main thing that Pokemon actually sends us is uh, the winner of the league cup gets a special play map with champion written on it. And then other, on top of that, it's just uh, booster packs from the latest set. You know what's interesting is I get a lot of folks that reach out to me and ask if those champion play mats are actually worth anything. And and you'd think because they're champion play mats, that's pretty exclusive. And I always say, you know what? Put them out there for about $500 just in case. And you'll be lucky if you get 200 by someone from someone at some point. So they don't sell all as well as you'd think they would. It depends on the which Pokemon's on the artwork generally. I like, you know I think a, a set or, two, or a, a season or two ago, it was Alolan Vulpix. And I think that one's close to a couple of hundred. But you have to think every store that's running a league cup is giving out three of them just three different age divisions and basically any local store that wants to get to that level can i know around columbus i think we're up to about six or seven stores that are running them just in the columbus area and so if you multiply that by every major city around the world then they're not in short supply really you can get these champion playmats if you want them and i think a lot of people don't really enjoy using the champion playmats if they didn't actually win it so I think it's a pretty limited market on whether people enjoy the Pokemon that's actually on the mat. Dan, Columbus really is a mecca of Pokemon card collecting. You seem to have brought the entire world just into Columbus with you. It looks like people are pretty excited about that. So, Well, I think we're a pretty big hub for playing. There's not too many collectors around here, but we are a very big playing hub. All right. Well, let's, looks like we still got some uh, some uh, some goals to achieve then. We've got to turn... The players, all of them into collectors, Dan. All right. Well, that's what I've been up to this week. Should we get on to the comments from last week's video? I'm definitely looking forward to it. Fantastic. Let's take a look at your comments. All right. First up, we have Pokemon Gifts says, Love it, guys. I went to Japan this year. How many kids are in every single Pokemon Center? And at all times of the day is madness. This hobby will be fine. Please come to the UK so I can meet you two legends. Yeah, uh, going around the Pokemon Centers when I was in Japan for Worlds, it was ridiculous. I mean, even after Worlds was done, we stayed there for a few extra days. And after I think a lot of the tourists from Worlds had left, it, they were still packed all the time. Yeah, and you're going to the UK, right, Dan? I know you're going in October or something because you're from the UK. So maybe you really can. Uh, maybe you can meet Pokemon Gifts and bring gifts from Pokemon to Pokemon gifts. I just know that I, I love the guy. That's all I can tell you. I mean, if Pokemon gifts is in the Northeast, then potentially, because I'm going back for my brother's wedding. Uh, so it won't be as much of a traveling trip. Although before we actually get to the UK, we've added some extra traveling because we added in uh, going to Lille in France first, which uh, there's a regional tournament there. So Laura's got on staff for that. And then we were going to go straight to England after that. Uh, but then there was an announcement this week, I guess this maybe could have gone in news, that the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam is doing a collaboration with Pokemon starting at the end of this month. So we don't know how long it's going to run for or if there are going to be any exclusive cards, 
but I imagine there will be some exclusive cards similar to the screen promos we got in Japan um, a few years back. So the plan, I think, is we're going into Lille, then we're going to go up to Amsterdam and see the Van Gogh Museum with the Pokemon collaboration, and then we're going over to the UK. It sounds like an amazing trip. I just think it's important for Pokemon Gifts to know, for those that have watched all 21 episodes of the podcast, that um, if he makes the effort to come and see you, you will not walk away. You'll no matter, even if you've got to go to the bathroom, whatever, you'll take the time and make the time to have a conversation with him because that's important. Right, Dan? Yeah. If I see anyone that I know, I'll make sure I uh, talk to people. I'll make, I'll probably be going to some stuff around the Northeast. I'm going to hopefully try and go to a Pokemon League or two and maybe a little Arcana night or something. And we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. And I like the idea that Pokemon's into everything now. We've got like, we've got the Van Gogh stuff now and, Maybe it'll be pop music next, and they'll be hosting the VMAs next year. I don't know. There's a lot of good stuff going on. You say pop music next. It's already into pop music. Okay, fair enough. I guess. Yeah. yeah. There are three cards that you don't own that we don't talk about, but I don't know if I've ever told you this. Three music artists have one of one Pokemon cards of themselves. It's Katy Perry, uh, Post Malone, and J Balvin have... Pokemon cards of themselves because they did music for uh, uh, I think it was the 25th anniversary album. That's very, no, I did not even know that. That's so yeah. cool. So cool. So they are, they are English language Pokemon cards, but they're one of one and were given to celebrities. So I doubt they'll ever show up unless there's some sort of charity auction. And if there's ever that charity auction, I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay, good. I like that. All right. Next comment we've got from Alex Hill says definitely planning to go to worlds this year even trying to play for an invite because i always wanted to play in hawaii yeah thank you alex you know what i love about that is you actually took the time to say that you were trying to go to worlds which is something that we asked about in the last podcast so thank you and i wish you the best of luck on the journey and hopefully you'll make it yeah i think there's probably going to be more people will know closer to the time if they're going to go i think there'll be a there will be a lot of people deciding whether they're going or not depending on if they get their invite a lot of the players you know won't want to travel if they're not actually playing in the main event but hopefully alex gets his invite and hopefully a lot of other people that we know do as well next up we have matty says hilarious as always guys david you forget not only am i dan's patreon i was your first and i believe only donated to your youtube channel I think Pokemon could do a 151 set containing each of Dan's crazy hairstyles and colors. My vote is for Rufio next. I mean, my hair's in a mohawk, so it's sort of Rufio-esque, but my hair is too thick and heavy to actually be up properly like Rufio's is. So I either need to get it really, really thinned out, or it's just going to be like this for a while. Dan, it's just a prioritization thing. If you're going to take all the time and effort and, and talk about doing it the way that you did and shave that thing down to nothing on the sides... Get the gel in there, mohawk that thing up. Just make a small part where the headphone thing comes in and you'll be just fine. I mean, the gel and stuff is in there, but it's just my hair is so thick and I say heavy that the gel and stuff won't hold it up. I would need to actually get it thinned out before I put gel and stuff in it if I wanted a full Rufio. Okay, well, I at some point everyone wants to see a full Rufio, so please do what you need to take. And Maddie. As always, Dan and I both thank you very much for your generosity. That's the absolute, you are, you are, if nothing else, a very, and maybe you are nothing else, but you are a very generous man. Thank you. Excellent. Next, we have a few comments from Stephen Kassoon. It says, first of all, hey guys, I have a question for you. Do you think Evolving Skies will be considered an all-time great and epic set in another decade? I'm trying to justify picking the box up at $400. I think Evolving Skies is always going to be pretty well appreciated because, you know, it's an EV set. It's probably the hardest and most expensive set to finish out of the Sword and Shield era. So I think a lot of people are going to be after it. I don't know about the box at 400. We could still see, you know, reprints or more packs and stuff coming to market. I would say if you like the set, I would always say try and build up the set rather than going for the sealed product but that is always just me because, you know, I don't like sealed product that much. Yeah, and I guess I'm going to take the other side of this argument, and that is that sealed product tends to be where the best investment will come in over time for sure. Um, I do agree with Dan that there's, from what I'm hearing, there seems to be even more Evolving Skies possibly coming out later this year, another reprint. Um, So that seems just flabbergasting, but that's kind of what I'm hearing. So 
you know, be careful of the purchase price. But in the end, as long as you're somewhat with whatever the market is, if the market's around that price and you pick up a box or two and tuck it away, typically with a product like that, that at least has that initial surge in price, which it's had, um, I think you'll be fine in the long run. I don't know if there's going to be another full reprint of Evolving Skies, but I know that a lot of like the boxed products that you get at Target with four or five packs in, Evolving Skies packs have been showing up in those fairly recently, even as recent as the last month or two. So there's more stuff going out there. I guess no more sealed boxes that we know of are getting out there, but always something to take into consideration. Yeah, good clarification, Dan, for sure. Uh, Stephen continues saying, Danny, you're a big cricket fan. Please say yes, England's our favourites to win the World Cup. I'm not really a big cricket fan. I don't watch a lot of sport. I even only really watch the football when it's, you know, World Cup or the Euros. And snooker I enjoy, but that's about it in terms of sport. Yeah, and what Dan should have said right there is that he's a huge cricket fan just to make one of our nice fans feel good. So I'm sorry for, sorry for that, Stephen. Um, I'm, and that was his responsibility. He's, you know, English. Um, I'm not a huge cricket fan. I just want to be honest with you. We have exterminators that come typically, you know, at least once every month or two. And so because we don't like crickets and they get in with the cockroaches mm -hmm. and, and everything else. So we really do try to do whatever we can to keep them away from us. So yeah, for me, not a, not a, not a big cricket fan. Amazing. Stephen's final comment was just to say congrats to David on completing the trophy card set. Uh, thank you so much, Stephen. Really appreciate that. It's just those, uh, you know, those little comments and those little congratulations mean a great deal. And, and with all the uh, time and effort that both myself and Dan have put in and many of our friends over the years to try to help, but it means a lot. Thank you. Next up, we have Pika Drew just says, can confirm that David is extremely smooth to transact and interact with. Thanks again for helping me source the final cards to complete my Staff Champions Festival set. Um, and, and who who was that from, Dan? That was from Pika Drew. Oh, Pika Drew. Okay, good. I, I really appreciate uh, the, the comment. Um, I do my best to try to be helpful. Uh, I uh, actually, this week, I'm trying to think who it was. It was, I think it was Craig. Um, who I've worked out a deal to help him fulfill a bunch of his holes. And um, he uh, and I offered him the podcast discount. What's the podcast discount? Oh, I'm not going to tell you. You have to figure it out on your own. But I can tell you it's a substantial discount because we love our folks that watch us and our friends that interact with us and our family that's who you guys are. So all you got to do is reach out and say, David, I got, a, I got a limited budget, but I need cards, cards, more cards. Get me cards. And you know what? We take care of you. Uh, you know, Dan's not so much, but I'll always take care of you. Don't worry about it. Next up, uh, Ponga Collectibles just says, commenting because I want to this time. Ponga, how cool are you? Okay. You aren't going to be coerced. You're not going to be convinced. You're not going to be manipulated into commenting. You're going to do everything of your own volition. You go, guy. We then have your average player says... Always a pleasure to listen to. We'll share this as much as possible so people can listen to this and cherish it like I do. That's all we can ask for. Very kind comment. We both Dan and I appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I don't cherish doing it. Dan does. I don't cherish listening to it. Dan does. Uh, I don't share. I really don't cherish that much. Um, I do cherish my Pokemon card collection. I do cherish all of you. So, so thank you. Right. Next up, we have a comment from Craig. What Craig has done is written a story similar to how you used to write stories for this, David. So I'm going to let you read this one out as, as you would if it was one of your stories. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate the opportunity. Craig, we are so impressed. Dan and I probably sat here for, for 10 to 15 additional minutes, no, not minutes, seconds before the podcast started. And we talked about, no, it was minutes, uh, about the effort you put in. This is really, truly impressive. Hope you guys will all listen. And thank you, Craig, for writing this. Here's what he said. He said, spectacular save. A lot of these things are in quotes on calling your lass a Snorlax. He was referring back to my inadvertent comment about my wife in the previous podcast. You'll hear it if you listen. They're not bad podcasts to go back and listen to. You can binge watch them when you're drinking heavily and want a way to forget Craig continued, however, I think it's best that you get to the shopping center and give the flower shop lady and the aroma lady a payday. 
and whilst you're at it, thinks you should pick up something covered in sugary sprinkles, whilst you're there just to safeguard against catching some furious fists, which I was able to avoid from my wife last week by that spectacular save. He continues, you don't want to end up having to take your camping gear into Viridian Forest because she's given you the heavy boots out of the door. I don't know, guys. I'm thinking if you guys have any kind of relationship situations, you've got something tough you need to tackle, get in with Craig. Um, he is something else. He really is. The guy's wired into everything, and he will he will save you from whatever you've kind of you know put your quicksand you've gotten yourself into. Thank you, Craig. Cool. It was a very cool comment, Craig. We very much appreciate that. Yeah. Next up, we have two comments from Laura because we called her out last week on uh, not having actually commented on the videos. She says, I listened to the videos on Wednesdays, but didn't have work on Wednesday because of a holiday. So here's my comment for the week. She also says, shout out to the Oddish Illustrator, who is the first non-competition winner from the US to illustrate a Pokemon card in years. That refers to the Oddish that was featured in the Path to the Peak TV show that we're getting as a promo, which we mentioned in the news item last week. I believe other than competition winners, uh, Chris Rush, the magic artist, was the last uh, US artist to illustrate a Pokemon card because, you know, basically everything is illustrated in Japan um, and then it just gets translated over here. And Chris Rush did one for WotC way back in the day. And then this one was done by a US artist for the show, which then made it onto the card, which is very cool. Dan, should you mention right now that there's a, a, an illustrator contest coming up for 2024? I don't know what it's going to result in as far as whether or not the card would actually get its separate promotional kind of thing or um, yeah. whatever. But, uh, but maybe you can talk about that because I know it's open to U.S. folks as far as potentially competing in it. Yeah, we can certainly mention that now. Um, so there is a competition open. I'll throw a link in the description where you can go and see all of the full details but there's a select number of pokemon you can draw and it gives certain themes you have to follow and it's the either the first place or the top few places will get their illustrations actually made into promo cards last year they did it and it was the arcanine bulbasaur and greninja um won it and those were made into a promo pack which you got through a code from the Pokemon Center when you put it, you had to apply for a code, you got your code, and then you could redeem it on an order from the Pokemon Center. Guessing they're going to do a similar sort of thing for this one. I don't think they'll be, you know, super limited like the art academies or anything in the past, but we'll know some more details on that. It's probably closer to the time. When you say that, Dan, it reminded me. So, so it was the one that it literally had like illustration winner or something on the card when you got it as a part of the Pokemon Center promo, right? Yeah, it says something like Illustration Contest 2023 on the card, yeah, on all three of the cards. Yeah, very cool. Well, remember, you can't win if you don't compete, and there's a lot of talented uh, folks out there. So, so yeah. um, give it a shot, and I hope, I hope and somebody, one of our folks, wins. Last year, it was only open to Japan and the U.S., but this year, it's now also open to, I think, the U.K., Canada, uh, potentially some places in Europe as well. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, just a couple more comments. We've got a couple from Jeffrey says, saw this video post posted on Verbank. Great. That is where I want people seeing the video because there was a lot of people in that group. Hadn't seen anything from David's social media pages in a long time, so didn't know he's been doing this podcast. Glad to know he's still trying to do something. Well, yeah, I think David still updates his Instagram and stuff occasionally, but I think it's mainly stories now rather than actual posts. So... If you just go on it on a certain day, it might look inactive. But he posts stories every now and then. Yeah, and I guess maybe I didn't really realize, uh, you know, that uh, that by doing the stories, I know they kind of disappear, and maybe I should post as well just to create some continuity out there. But um, because I, of course, I'm thinking that I'm I'm posting to the couple of thousand folks that that follow me, um, and so it was least uh, sad to hear that other folks maybe not realize. But great to have Jeffrey back in the in the uh, saddle again. Yeah. And um, and I appreciate you watching, and it's it's nice to to kind of catch up. So thank you. And Jeffrey also commented to say, "I'm hoping to get on staff for Next Worlds. I'd love to meet you in person." Finally, David, that would be great, Jeffrey. Uh, good luck with that. Hopefully, you're able to you know work some regionals and some ICs and stuff throughout the year, so you can build up your profile to hopefully work Next Worlds. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I would I would like to do that as well. And I. 
I can't build up my profile through work in the regionals and stuff, but maybe I can just work in the back scenes of worlds, maybe like a janitorial person, like helping people clean up from the food stands. And I'd like to actually have people just kind of watch me working and then say, what's he doing? And then maybe they'll sort of ask for me to be a part of a world staff in the future. The convention center unions would have your head if you tried that. <laughs> you have all the answers, don't you? I just I can't, I can't slide anything past you. Okay, fine. Right, yeah. I, 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 I've I've worked at regionals and stuff. I know how the uh, convention center staff are. You can't do anything without them. You can't even move a table without asking them first. What if I go in the bathroom and just be one of those guys that like polishes your shoes or puts some perfume on you or whatever? Can I do anything like that? I mean, you can probably do it. I think that maybe becomes a police matter rather than a convention center staff matter at that point oh, if you're just yeah. hanging around in the toilet approaching okay, people. Yeah. You win again, Dan. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Final comment for the week is from Christopher. Says, would love to help grow this podcast however I can. One of the best. Well, as we said last week, comment on it when you see it posted in any of the groups. Share it on Instagram, whatever. Just tell your friends about it. Just get the word out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to. So, so we've been kind of moving into this next segment, which you know, we'll have to retitle at some point. So we won't move into a new segment at the moment. We'll just throw the comments and let them roll along. But um, but I want to say in addition to Chris and to um, your average player and for the, the nice comments about uh, trying to grow the podcast and referring us to other people, um, there were uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Kassoon, who also uh, was able to repost us a little bit. And we want to thank him. And Philip W. did the same thing. Um, Jeffrey also did the same thing a little bit. So, so I just wanted to specifically to all those folks that are taking the time and effort to show me and Dan that you're reposting and telling others, you know, it's just like Dan always says, let's just keep doing what we're doing and, and, you know, try to entertain, try to give a little good content and eventually it'll keep growing. But, but the help is always just, we are so sincerely appreciative. Um, I do want to take a quick second to, uh, say congratulations to one of our favorites, Shadowless Jack, Jack Meeker, who was blessed with another little baby girl this week. Um, so, you know, I, I was calling him in the hospital and trying to give him a heck about why aren't you reposting us and don't you care and, you know, and and I need you. And, he, and I thought he was just ignoring my calls. But, you know, little did I know later on, he was actually you know, supporting his beautiful wife with a new wonderful little girl. So congratulations from Dan and I to that. And, um, and thank you. And, uh, don't forget, Dan, we'll talk about this later in the podcast, but I'm going to be trying to give you, you know, little incentives and gifts that I will pass along for all of those that are doing kind things. And that will lead not only from referrals, but also to bounties as we like to call them. And we're going to talk about that later as well. Yeah. Congratulations, Jack. I wasn't aware of that, but yeah, huge congratulations from me as well. Right, well, we've had a lovely time with some comments. Do you have a trainer deck A or B ready? I do. All right, let's do that then. It's time to play trainer deck A or trainer deck B. Okay, whenever you're ready, let's get this over with. <laughs> so, Dan, uh, look, I know this is your favorite part of the podcast, and so I just want to highlight it again for those that might be brand new. Trainer Deck A or Trainer Deck B, you know, Trainer Deck A is a lot more rare than Trainer Deck B, but finding anyone in sealed condition is a is a thing that's hard to do. I was told that somebody walked into Collecticon this weekend and they actually brought like three or four Trainer Deck Bs. So somebody had a nice opportunity to buy a few things, but you don't typically see that in Trainer Deck A's. But what this segment is about, this is about a series of questions or options or alternatives that I give to Dan. He's got 10 seconds to provide an answer with an explanation, if a choice, if he'd like to. If he doesn't want to give an explanation, there's no pressure. We're not a pressure podcast. We can't worry about that. If Dan exceeds the time limit, chooses to break the rules or do anything of his own uh, you know, enjoyment that don't fit what we're trying to do here as a podcast team partners, uh, Pokemon Judge uh, will be uh, magically appear and he could be disqualified just temporarily because otherwise the segment would go away. Dan, here we go. Are you ready? We're starting out with Trainer Deck A or Trainer Deck B. All right. Dan. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream or dangerously to your death. The second one, dangerously to your death. Let's do that. Wow, having a really good week, Dan. It's nice to hear that. Yeah. All right. Good. 
Dan, birdie or eagle? Eagle. That's good, Dan. I'm proud of you for that one. Um, I don't play golf, but I know it's better. Okay, good. That's nice. Dan, sociology or physiology? Uh, sociology. I think Laura will be happy that you picked that. I don't know why, since she's really more about philosophy, but yeah. sometimes philosophical concerns can dovetail into sociological concerns. Dan, it all has to do with the nature or nurture debate, which for you, probably 50% of both. Dan, checkmate or checkpoint? Uh, checkpoint, because you get checkpoints in video games, and I don't play chess very much. All right. And, and Dan, for you, checkpoint also has relevance as a sobriety thing uh, when you are, you know, driving. And I know you've, you're trying to battle the addiction. So good sure. luck with that, my friend. Dan, head, shoulders, knees, or toes? Shoulders, I suppose. I'm not going to give a Do you, you know the song, Dan? I do know the song. Okay. It's good. I don't know if in the UK they actually have children limericks or anything like that. Dan, momentum or momentary? Momentum. Because I want us to grow this podcast with momentum. I don't care if it's slow momentum. I'd like to keep growing over time rather than just having momentary success and then disappearing away. Well, sometimes it's the journey that makes the success all that much more worthwhile, Dan. So I encourage you to enjoy the moment every once in a while as well. You're just too hard on yourself. Dan, level-headed or increasingly optimistic? Level-headed. I'm definitely not increasingly optimistic. You just talked about the importance of momentum and having it grow the podcast. And if you don't stay optimistically through the whole thing, what are you doing, Dan? You're, 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 a, you're a, a diatribe of inconsistencies. No, I'm not. I'm wanting it to happen. I'm just not optimistic about it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have, I, for once, I'm actually speechless. I just need to shut up. Dan, organic or gluten free? Organic, because I've tried to eat gluten free stuff before and it just really doesn't taste good. Well, I'm, at least you're open to trying new things, Dan. That's the reason I think the podcast is going to do so well. Dan, drawing or painting? Uh, drawing, it's less messy. Cheating or lying? I mean, neither. <laughs> but you can't do either. Fine, lying. Why? What are you going to lie about, Dan? Everything. <laughs> oh, I love your conviction. This, yeah. is my, this is why we're such good friends. Dan, 85% or 93%? 93, I guess. Neither seem super relevant. They're completely relevant, Dan. And okay. this is what I'm talking about, okay? They're the fat contents of ground beef. And they're two of the most main fat contents. And so you get 93% right. fat-free, 7% fat, which is for those of us who you know like to not ingest as much fat. And then 85 would be the uh, the other one where there's more fat. Maybe it tastes a little better, but it's not as healthy for you. So, I, you know. I uh, drain the fat yeah. of my ground beef anyway. Okay. Well, figures. What else would I expect from you? Dan, Wagyu or Kobe? Um, Wagyu? Because I, I think I had some Wagyu when I was in Japan. I don't did think you, I had any Kobe. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, but I, I eat steak well done, so it doesn't matter to me whether it's a posh steak or not. Laura Dan, hates nice having a steak well done, but a nice friend of mine took me to a restaurant the uh, last week, and um, and I don't ever eat anything fancy or go to even restaurants outside of you know maybe some kind of sandwich shop down the road, and um, and I was able to try Kobe and Wagyu probably both for the first time, and I tried to order them well done, and I tried to talk the waiter into allowing me to do that, and neither he nor my dining partner would allow me to order it well done. They said we will are not we're not allowing you to do this despite your previous uh, predilection for doing so. And it was like eating butter, Dan. It was so amazing. The steak because of the, the cut of beef was just incredible. That's just my story, Dan. I had to share yeah. because I've never had that stuff. Dan, swa blue or swa black? Swa blue. Mimic you or mimic me? Mimic you. Why would you want to mimic me? That's the next question, David. Surskit or Mamskit? Surskit. I'm just going to put the Pokemon on for all of these. How many you got? Toga Kiss or Toga Hug? Toga Kiss. Lillipup or Lilla Kitty? 
I didn't even hear the second one because it cut out, but I'm going to say Lily Pop still. You missed Lily Kitty. All right, Lily Kitty. Fine, I'm still picking Lily Pop. Vengeful Punch or Supportive Pat? Vengeful Punch. I'll still have the Pokemon card. You have so much anger in you. I don't like that do. side of you at all. I do. Malaysia or Singapore? Uh, I'll say Malaysia because we still need to get a card from there. Brilliantly led into. We're going to do some highlight cards in a minute. I'll say Malaysia because we still need to get that one. All right, I'll stop there then. I was going to say third or fourth, but I'm going to stop on Malaysia and let us roll right into the highlighted cards, buddy. Thanks for cool. playing Today. Trainer Deck here, Trainer Deck B. Yeah, it's an exciting highlighted cards this week. And now for our highlighted cards of the week. So, highlighted cards this week. We're going to talk about something very, very exciting. I think a lot of people do not know about these cards yet. So, these are related to worlds. We did talk a bit about worlds. Two reasons they're related to worlds. One, we picked some of them up at worlds and contacted some people about the worlds. And also, winning these cards qualifies you for worlds. Now, I'm sure a lot of people think, oh, does this mean they're IC champion cards? We know about those. But no, this is something different. So... This is Pretty something, recent. wait, Dan, this is something different? This is something different. This is different from the ICs. This is not the regular IC promos that we've been talking about recently. Now, when you say IC, are you talking about international championships or what do you call yes. those? International championships. And Dan, when you said that most people don't know about these cards, do I know about these cards? I mean, you should. I've been talking to you about them for a couple of months, but we'll see, we'll see what your brain does. Okay. All right, so... People might know that a lot of Pokemon organized play was restructured recently, mainly in the Asian regions. That is why, you know, we talked a little bit last week about how we're losing Oceana Internationals, because Oceana Internationals, that region used to cover a lot of Asia, places like Singapore, the Philippines, Malaysia, all of those places were kind of covered in the Oceana bracket. But Oceana is now just Australia, New Zealand, and all of those other countries are in the Asian bracket for tournaments going forward. Now, all of those tournaments within Asia, all of the countries, they're split up. So there's actually nine different tournament seasons or tournament structures running throughout Asia. You know, we have the Japanese one, there's the Korean one that we already had that was already going, but there's Thailand, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, China, uh, Hong Kong, and... the. I think I might have said more than nine. I think there's maybe more than nine. There's a lot of them going on. The relevant ones to us are Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Hong Kong EN. The EN is relevant. That is because these are the four places in Asia that play in English. They have English cards as their main cards rather than having a native language printed. Hong Kong EN is because Hong Kong is actually split up. Hong Kong has two concurrent tournament structures, one played in simplified Chinese, one played in English. Now, the sets that they get are the exact same sets that we get over here. You know, it's not going to be the Japanese sets just translated over. It is the standard releases that we get, you know, Brilliant Stars, Astro Radiance, etc. I think that's about the time they started. So it's only a few cards from those places that are actually going to be relevant to us and relevant to David, and that is tournament promos, because they get tournament promos with their country printed on the card. So the same way that the ICs, we got Ultra Balls this year, those four countries got Ultra Balls with their country's uh, name printed on the card for Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, and Hong Kong EN. And similar to the IC promos, these each one of these countries had four different cards. Player, staff, top eight, champion. Different to the ICs, video game tournaments don't happen at these. It's TCG only. And there are no age divisions. Or for this last season, there were no age divisions. There are going to be age divisions going forward. But what that means is that these champion stamped cards are one of one. There's four of them, but they're four different cards. It's one for each country, and they are one of one. The top eights, uh, the champion doesn't actually get a top eight one, so the top eights are out of seven. There's seven copies for each of the countries. The staff and players, there's also not a huge amount. 
um, because these are much smaller tournaments than uh, the international ones. But I'm hoping they're not going to be ridiculously rare. So obviously, I'm kind of leading the conversation here, even though these are David's cards that he's purchased. When we found out about these, I tried reaching out to some contacts that I had in some of these countries, but it's still been pretty difficult to chase up some of these. Our biggest success so far has been from Singapore. Singapore, we have the champion. We have a top eight. I've uh, paid for us to have players ones. They haven't arrived just yet, but those have been paid for. And Singapore staff, we have a lead. It's not finalized yet, but uh, fingers crossed on that one. And then Philippines, we have the champion. I say we. It's David's card. David has the champion. That is the one that Joshua uh, mentioned when he commented on last week's podcast. Or he commented two weeks ago, and then we read it out last week, saying he hoped that David would mention his card when he got it. So that is where David is currently at. Uh, I have reached out to some people in Malaysia, trying to make some contacts there, and I'm trying to reach out to some people in Hong Kong as well to see if we can chase up the Hong Kong EN promos. But that is also where this is going to come in. If anyone here knows anyone in those countries, obviously we are very, very interested in trying to get those cards. There's the two champions from Hong Kong and from Malaysia, which again, they're one of ones. If you find out who wins, who won those, those are the people you're going to need to speak to. And then we still need the top eights from Hong Kong, Malaysia, and uh, Singapore. No, sorry, we've got the one from Singapore. It's Hong Kong, Malaysia, and the Philippines we need the top eights from. We still do need all of the staff ones. You know, um, if the other contact does come through for Singapore with fine ending up with two staff ones at some point and then we need the player ones for everything except uh singapore and the player ones me and laura are interested in buying as well because those are the ones which are still within our budget so multiple player ones would be nice but that is where we are at with those going forward i'll say as well for future years we will be looking to pick up cards from those countries as well so if we can meet some people make some connections great we would love to keep working with people in the future obviously as i said they are introducing age divisions going forward so at minimum there are going to be three copies of champion cards going forward so this year is going to be the difficult year for those asian cards because of the fact that the champions are one of one i mean the fact that we have two of them out of the four is already incredible I mean, I'm gonna have. There's gonna be loads of pictures and stuff all over the screen now, David. So people will see what they're looking for. But of course, anything from those areas which are printed in English, if they're in any way different to what we get in the rest of the world, definitely contact me and David about it. You will definitely be compensated for a middleman fee of some kind, depending on what the card is. Uh, we'll make sure we beat any other offers on these super rare ones. And yeah, that is. Our highlighted cards of the week. David, do you have anything else you want to add you feel that we need to talk about with these? I know I've just spoke for like five minutes. Yeah, no, it's a great discussion. And I appreciate how, you know, you kind of decipher through how rare these things really are. And we're really excited. So number one, we got to for sure thank, I, I know Josh specifically because I went back and forth with him. Dan went back and forth with him a lot as well. Um, so we're very appreciative of you. And we did definitely highlight your card and you were kind enough to send it across the whole world to me. So, so um, I'm, I'm ecstatic about that. Um, Dan did his magic and stuff with, uh, with the Singapore cards. And so we're ecstatic about that as well. Um, like Dan said, um, as far as the, the bounties and that kind of thing, we are definitely, you don't have to, you don't have to bias the card. You don't have to necessarily, um, it doesn't necessarily have to result in a sale. It's just that anybody kind enough to help us with a lead that we might be able to work on to try to find these cards or talk to other people. Um, we'd really be appreciative. I think most of the folks that watch this podcast know me. And the one thing you get with me is someone who doesn't sell these cards. Um, and that's the difference. Uh, so many folks right now, as you'll find out more and more when we talk about worlds and further stuff that I've found out about in the actual trophy cards, it's like almost every single person, if not every single person, bought a card to ultimately resell and they've resold them already. So, you know, talk about little old me off in the corner who just buys to fill collection holes. Um, I'm not sure that anybody does that anymore. 
And especially not only with the trophies, just with almost any sets. I look at all these master sets that are built. Nobody knows what a master set is, of course, but master sets that are supposedly built, allegedly built, and you see them for sale out there on any sets. And they're built for resale. They're very rarely built for people that end up holding them. Um, the Dans and Laura's of the world are, are the rare uh, couple. Um, and they're so busy, they can't even finish one of them. So, um, but then you're talking about a guy that can't get his mohawk to stand up straight either. So I digress. I've got to just settle down a little bit here. But uh, World's cards, highlighted cards, Singapore cards, uh, Malaysia cards, Hong Kong EN, Philippines, anybody that can get us into any of those extra cards, staff, players, uh, we'd appreciate it very, very much. So thank you. And uh, one last thing to mention, if anyone is you know able to reach out to people and they reach out to either of those two champions that we don't have the cards for, uh, the champion cards were given out actually inside a plaque. There's a very nice plaque. It's a screw down. It has the card in the middle. The plaque, I believe, has you know a little a bar saying that where it was won, everything like that. The card is very easy to remove from the plaque. We don't care about the plaque. The winner can keep that. They can keep that as their memento and sell the card. That's fine. The two that we have, the winners kept their plaques, and that didn't really affect the price that we were offering because David's interest is just in that card, and you know this way it leaves the winner with something to see. Um, I believe it's, it was only the champion that actually came out in the plaques. Um, the top eight and everything were just given out as usual. Yeah, well, again, and my thanks to you, Dan, for all the time and effort in trying to make some of this stuff happen. So, so I'm confident someone's going to connect us somewhere. It's we, you know, we try Fingers to do right thing, so. Yeah. So to end off this section, I will say next week on next week's podcast, we will start the discussions of the actual 2023 trophy cards and other cards from the World Championships. The plan had been to do that some of that this week. It is just with getting this card in from Joshua and us now having two out of the four. It felt like a good time to talk about these, raise awareness of them, and you know, hopefully get some people talking and start trying to make some connections on it. But next week, we promise we will start talking about those trophy cards. Uh, I can't wait, Dan. I've got so much to yeah. say. I know nothing about them, Dan. I'm not going to say anything. But I'm going to enjoy listening to you talk, show pictures, and and know that I've got a at least one of them in my possession at some point. I don't have it in my possession, but at least no, I, I have to okay. own one of them. Yeah. If you got, if you ever fly out or you and Laura, you know, whatever. So yeah, yeah. good. Uh -huh. Well, at least you do have one of those Asian cards in your possession. You have Joshua's card in your possession. I still have yeah. the Singapore one, but you do have Joshua's. Yeah. All you're right. like, you're like the mafia to me. You're like a mob and I've got to pay like, you know, funds to just keep my store open. So, okay. Yeah. Anyway, next I have on my list uh, David's rant. Do you have a rant ready? Yes, I absolutely do. Okay. Oh, good. David has a rant coming on. Hello, Dan. It's Hello. good to see you. I just, um, so I, I need to do this quick because I, I need to let you know that David stepped away and, um, and I'm his sister, Dove. And uh, I just, um, I'm so excited to be here with you today because... Usually I think that, you know, I watch his podcast. You're on the podcast too, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the thing is that today, oh, by the way, I just want to apologize. I've got a little bit of the COVID going on. And so I need to wear this mask just so that I can protect the family and the neighbors and the animals. Um, do you ever wear a mask during COVID, uh, Daniel? Not in the house, I don't, but outside I do. Okay. All right. Well, so anyways, um, I know that I think he was going to like come back and do a rant, but you know what I say? I say, screw the guy. Cause he doesn't let me out of him here very much. I'm kind of locked up. And I thought before he gets back, maybe I could just share a little bit of my Pokemon card collection. Cause this is my opportunity to let the world know that I do exist. And I'm, and I, I think there's things that they should know about me as well. Don't you? Sure. Well, okay. let's, well let's see what you have to say first. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to show you a little bit of my collection, and I hope that everybody can enjoy it. Do you have people that watch this podcast, Daniel? We did. I don't know if we're going to going forward. Okay. Um, <laughs> gosh, that's sort of sad, but I guess I understand where you're coming from. All right, well, fair enough. Let's just look at a few of the things that I'm most proud of in my Pokemon card collection. I'd like to start out with this card right here. Hopefully you can see it. It's like a it's like a silver um, Charizard V Max with a 330 points at the top, and um, I've been told it's from Lebanon, 
And, um, and also I've been told that it's like somewhere between three and $400 on eBay, not 300 and 400 Daniel, but between $3 and $400 on eBay. I'm really like that. Daniel, I went to um, Target uh, like a, maybe a week ago and I got this, um, I got this little thing right here. Uh, it's a card with a coin. I don't know what it says because I can't read very well, Daniel, but it says speed ops, speed ops. And I think I should probably speed up along what I'm showing before David gets back. Daniel, I have this super old thing called Next Quest and it's from a, it's this Pokemon trading card figure game. Have you seen one of these before? I have, yeah. Oh, is it anything that could make me some money one day, or you don't know that for sure? No idea. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, it's got a little cute little Pikachu in there, and I just love it. It sort of makes me warm and fuzzy, like right before I need to be warm and fuzzy. Also, Daniel, when I take my notes in the hobby, I have this right here, and it's a Pokemon a book. It's a booklet. It says Pokemon Organized Play. It has, I don't, do you know the character on the front, Daniel? Because I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's a Groudon. Okay. Well, I think if you and I get a chance, maybe, and your wife's not around, we could do a little Groudon one time, okay? But don't tell her. Good a Lord. Daniel, look, this, I got this from like the World Championships or something. It's super cool. David yeah. sometimes will give me something just to make me shut up. And then I also have these two t shirts, Daniel. I think you're going to love these a lot. Take a look at this. Do you recognize this? Yep, that's from Worlds uh, 2010, I think. You're very close. Picture. You're very close because look on the back. It's going to tell you exactly what it's from. Oh, 2007. I knew it was a Hawaii one. Yes, I wanted to bring that up because David said that maybe like this year that's going to be in Hawaii again. I don't yep. think he's going to let me go because usually he makes me stay home and take care of the cat. But, um, but it's mm -hmm. okay. I could go. We'd have fun there. I know that for sure. And this is the last one, Daniel. I think you're going to really love this too. Take a look at this, Daniel. Is this special? Who's on this one? Well, that's the World's 2005 one. So that's the art from the card on a T-shirt. Yeah, you're, you're, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. David told me like you're so smart. And, um, and so I, I think that you are smart because I'm going to show you the other side of this one. Mm -hmm. Look at the year. Look at the year, Daniel. Yeah, 2005. Yes, and it's in San Diego, which is a super good town. Do you know, Daniel, if you can go to like, um, you can go to uh, La Jolla, which is near San Diego, and you can watch celebrities bring super um, expensive cards, and they just do a lot of stuff there. And then you just watch them. It's called like, I call it like people watching or celebrity watching. Do you ever do that? No, not usually because they don't really have celebrities in Ohio. <laughs> Oh, gosh, that's really unfortunate. Well, maybe sometime you can come out and visit us and we'll take a plane together and we'll go to La Jolla and we can just have super fun there. OK, um, I I'm sorry. I hope you're not going to get sick from my covid mask, but I did get a special one. Do you see it has like a little Pikachu on yeah, it? I see it. OK, because I like to represent. I'm a, I represent is what I do. Daniel, I have to go right now. I don't want to stand much longer because if he catches me, all heck is going to break loose. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Also, this is a nice, I, this is a custom dress. I don't know if you can see it. And actually I can't go down the back cause it shows my tattoo, but it has a okay. little bit of like Pikachu's on it too. Okay. Okay. All right. Listen, you have a great day. I don't know what day this actually is, but whenever the day this comes out or the day you film or the day you edit or whatever you do as a, as a podcast influencer, um, have a super good time doing it. Okay. Thanks. We will have okay. a great day. Okay, bye, Daniel. Bye. What cards have our hosts found today? All right, well, that was whatever that was. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to make it clear that anyone who has a problem with that should direct their comments to David rather than me. And we'll, I'm not looking forward to the comment section next week. Let's just say that. Who knows what that place is going to be like. Anyway, let's move swiftly, swiftly on. To the look what I found section. I actually haven't picked up many new Pokemon cards recently. Uh, I normally like to do something that's fairly recent. So, David, you said you had a couple this week, so why don't you just do two this week? Uh, thanks, Dan. I, in fact, luckily, I do have two this week. Um, and I just want to say, I don't know what you were referring to uh, prior, but uh, 
but you know, hopefully I didn't do something, you know, to offend anybody. I, 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 I don't know, I, you know, so anyways, here's my cards. So number one, I have, um, I have, uh, this one and I got this from McDonald's. So I only bought 10 of these packs and, um, and some of those that know me don't know that I don't open anything. Look at this. Okay. Oh, yeah, like Dan has one too. And look yeah, at we, we got all Sprigatito from ours. Yeah. And I don't, um, I don't open anything, but it says match battle and there's four additional game cards and I'll never open it. I'll just keep it because it's fun to know that as an adult, I can still act like a kid and I'm really excited. So I got 10 packs at a dollar 89 each from McDonald's and they didn't want to sell them to my wife, but she's kind enough to beg and plead. And that's all I'm going to have. So let me look over here at this thing instead of looking over here at this thing. Okay. And number two is, and I don't have it sitting here, but I, Dan's going to put a picture up. I bought something really unique this week. Um, to me, it was unique because I'd never seen it. Now you have to realize I've been scanning the Facebook listings a little more than I used to in the old days. And I'm going to talk to you about this in one of the upcoming podcasts. It's really, it's fantastically interesting and invigorating. And I mean, I went to bed at, after three in the morning last night, like an idiot, because I can't get off these darn Facebook listings. But I ended up buying something that the seller on eBay, this was actually on eBay, by the way, so not, so I guess I should clarify, called it a yellow filler prototype test card editor owned. So let me say it again. And Dan's going to put a picture up. It's a Wizards of the Coast yellow filler prototype test card editor owned. And he said, this is the only known editor owned graded card. So what you'll see is it's got a yellow front but it's got a blue regular Pokemon back. It's like a blank card. And this is what the person wrote. I'm just going to read it to you. This card is one of the proofs used, one of the proofs used for the yellow border in the Neo series of Pokemon. It was owned and pedigreed to the original editor of the Wizards of the Coast. It is pedigreed to Michael Ryan via CGC. And you'll see that his name is written on the, the, the slab. And then he said, I hate to part with this card, but due to circumstances, he let it go. It's been the centerpiece of his collection. So I don't know why this stuff appeals to me. It's unique. It's different. Um, I, I figured that with the difficulties of authenticating for a lot of cards these days, the fact that CG was, CGC would be uh, essentially uh, marking it as something that was an editor card, whatever that means, um, was really kind of cool. So have you seen one before? Do you know of this card before? Uh, is this a unique one of one or one of five or 10? Um, can anybody help me decipher what is an editor owned card? Uh, even though that could just be the seller's terminology. I'm curious for any of your input. What do you think? Would you have bought it? Uh, David, what did you pay for it? I think I paid uh, maybe a, almost $500 for it is what I think after the taxes and everything on eBay came out to be. So let me know your comments about it. I'd love to hear that. Dan, your thoughts at all? So I don't ever recall seeing the full yellow filler card before. I, I might have seen one or two in the past, but they're definitely nowhere near as common as, you know, the ones with blank written on them. And I think I've even seen the grayscale Pokemon, uh, the grayscale back, you know, on, that's on the front a couple of times, but I don't ever recall seeing the yellow one. Um, I will say what the editor owned means is when people are putting the pedigrees on these things, it basically means that CGC are confirming that they got it, that this card, this copy was owned by someone who worked at Wizards of the Coast at the time. Um, so likely it was that person themselves who brought it in, had their stuff graded. And sometimes they will put something, a pedigree on there like that. They've, they do it before sometimes when um, cards are tied to a certain event, you know, when, uh, I know PSA did it when Logan Paul did his box break and stuff, the very first one, the like famous one that he did, the big live stream. When people graded cards from that, they put, you know, Logan Paul box break on that. Um, and I know that uh, Steve Wozniak's um, Magic Collection got a lot of that uh, mm. when he was... Because he had uh, all early Magic stuff from when it first came out. He had a huge collection that he just let sit in his garage for you know, 25 years, something, then he broke it out. And then when they graded that, they um, put his name and stuff on the labels so people knew it was part of his collection. Anyway, I think it makes, stuff like that, I think makes the card more niche, but I think it makes it more desirable to the right person. Um, this one, I think it kind of just guarantees that 
it was something that came, you know, from what's it. Obviously, it isn't a released card in any way. It's something that should... I mean, all of these filler cards should never leave the factory, basically. Sometimes they end up in packs, but it shows that this one came directly from Wizards of the Coast. Okay. All right. I mean, would, would it be something that... Do you think it was a decent purchase, or do you think, hey, you would have no interest in something like that? I think similar to a lot of other stuff we've talked about, it's one of those things where, for me, it's cool, but it would be one where I wouldn't prioritize it over other things. It would be one of those ones where it was like, if I had all of my collections done and I saw it, I'd say, yeah, I want that. It's kind of cool, but I would rather be picking up the released cards than picking up that. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. All right, cool. And that's, look what I found for the both of us. Yeah, we're getting through it uh, pretty quick this week um, because also there's not really any TCG in the news. The only thing I think we had to talk about was the illustration contest, and we put that in the comments. So I think we're making good time this week. Okay. I know I know. I read there's a ton of stuff coming out, but um, but when do the – when do the – are 151s US, are they out now, Dan? Uh, no, 151 come. I think the first products start coming out next week. Okay. Um, we'll maybe talk about that a bit next week. So I, I'm hoping to get uh, a lot of it on release day. Uh, without going into too much detail, we have some money that's supposed to be coming in from a place and it hasn't come in yet. So if that money comes in by Friday, I'll be buying all the 151 when it releases. And if it doesn't, I'll be yelling at some people down the phone. All right, Dan, but, if you need a small loan so you can do whatever you need, let me know. You know, I don't want you to stop buying so you can do your 75 different podcasts, opening up every possible 151 product. Hey, I, uh, I changed how I'm doing my openings now. I decided if all the stuff that comes out in a week is getting like one video together, just so that I don't have 10 videos lined up, I'll do one video that comes out on a release weekend and I'll show off all the products that release that weekend. All right. Well, listen, whatever works for you, if you need a few yeah. dollars, you're worth it. Just pay it back when you can. Oh, um, you know. Yeah. And uh, let's see, I was going to say something else about the, oh, so one, one, of, one of the kind people that watch us who I don't remember, but I can look back in the comments was said, said maybe they would help with these, the, uh, the Pokemon Center ETBs to try to help keep my collection alive. So, so um, if, if you're watching and you remember mm -hmm. and it comes out, um, reach out and I'll see if I can make a nice trade with you or something like that. So that'd be sweet. The one yeah. things I, the things I know I'm definitely getting are the, po the Pokemon center ETBs and I'm the UPCs, but I don't think they release next weekend just because those things were pre-ordered and prepaid for. Yeah. I, I say prepaid for, I put a $5 deposit down and then my credit card went over the limit this week. So I had to fix that because it drew out the rest of the money for it. Cause I forgot that it was happening, but at least I know I'm getting those. Um, I guess I'll say a couple of things about 151 now, since we're on the topic. It's been confirmed no Master Ball reverses. Thank the Lord there are no Master Ball reverses. And there are God Packs in English 151. For the first time, we're getting English God Packs. Uh, it's not going to be as good as Japanese God Packs. Japanese God Packs were you'd get six secret rares in a pack, and it would be two runs of one of the Kanto starters, you know, all three. Uh, but English God Packs, you can get, you'll can you get three secret rares and it'll be a run of you know, Squirtle, Water, or Blastoise, Charmander, Charmulin, Charizard, or Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur. And I, I see you looking blankly when I said Master Ball reverses. So Japan had all of the set came in reverse hollow, obviously, and it had a Pokeball design on it. So when you tilted the card, you'd see Pokeballs in the reverse hollow. And then also... Every card had another reverse holo version that instead had a master ball on the background, and those master balls were one per box. So there was about, you know, it's 151 Pokemon, some EXs, but then also some trainers. So there's about about 155 cards which have the reverse hollows. So it was about 155 boxes you would need worth of uh, packs opening to get that full set. And for Japanese 151, the Pikachu with the Master Ball Reverse has actually overtaken all of the Secret Rares to be the most expensive card from the set. So wow. I am so thankful they're not doing that in English because even just doing that once would be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. Um, wow. Okay. Well, I'm as a as a collector, you know, I'm glad I'm I'm on your side. So, yep, yeah, it would have been awful, but yep. Yeah, hopefully, I'll, I'll have some one fifty one opened before we record our next podcast, so we can talk about that a lot more next week. Okay. Good. Sounds good. All right. Well, I guess we threw the news into the look what I found. So. Do you have an ending game ready or are we doing the Ferris Bueller ending where we fake it and then you ask me some questions? Yes, yes. I think we should Ferris Bueller end right now because I do have a, a, I do have a special new segment to, today to introduce. So, yeah. Finally, let's play a game before we go. All right, so here's the fake ending, I guess, where we pretend it's over and then David does something else. So I'll say, obviously, you can follow us on all of the social medias. Twitter and Instagram are the big ones that we use, although mainly Instagram. We're Coffee Talks Podcast on Instagram and Coffee Talks Poke on Twitter. Uh, there's a TikTok linked in the description. If I ever learn how to do those videos, that'll be there. If you're listening to an audio-only version of this, then you'll have had a special announcement at the start, probably. But you can see the video version of this with all of those nice pictures of the cards at youtube.com slash djgigabyte, and you'll find all of our other personal links and stuff in the descriptions of everything. So now, David, what are you going to do today? So, Dan, before I do that, I want to say that there are so many of you that are watching that are so incredibly talented and have been so kind and generous with your offers to me in the past. And I know that Dan has so much responsibility in dealing with the technological stuff that needs to happen to make this podcast happen. And so if any of you have ideas on other pieces of this that Dan has mentioned before and is still trying to come up to speed on, like, I don't know what those things are, but making smaller videos or reels or or TikToks or whatever it might be, please reach out to either Dan or me and let's see if maybe we can collaborate and get a little assistance and we can try to, again, uh, increase the pace of getting some of these other little tidbits out there, open up these other channels. Uh, again, I, I know so many of you are talented, much more talented than Dan and myself. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, all right, so today in the final segment, uh, because there's no reason you should still be here, leave, get out, go about your day, but stay if you'd like. Um, uh, Dan, as you know that Dan Norton, my good uh, partner here on podcasting, Dan does not have a, a job. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. unfortunate. So um, towards that end, and notwithstanding his amazingly pink mohawk hair, uh, I thought today we would start a new segment that is basically training Dan for a job interview. All right. So, Dan, I'll ask questions as if you're, you've just walked into my office. And, um, and I just need you to respond as if we're doing a job interview. And I'll, I'll help uh, see if I can, can navigate through the, anything you might not be doing to an optimum strength position. Does that make sense, Dan? Yeah, but I just want to clarify for the people watching – I have had jobs. I have done interviews and got jobs before. I I chose to try and I chose to leave the previous job I was at to try and put more time into, you know, videos and stuff. And the only reason I might be going back to uh, getting a job is that it's just not going well. But I I left my last job on good terms, and it was my own decision. So just just clarifying that. No, that's a good clarification, Dan. And mental illness is a real thing, mental health and stuff. So whatever makes you feel good, it makes me feel ecstatic. I just want you to know. So, so yeah, maybe this will just be refresher courses in hopes you never have to use them ever. Dan, sure. you've just walked into my office. I'm going to say hello, and we're going to go from there. So uh, hello, Mr. Norton. Uh, welcome. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing real well. Thank you for asking. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to come in today. Um, so, uh, you know, just to make things simple, why don't we get started and why don't you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Dan and I, as I said, well, as I said to you, I quit my last job in order to try and focus on content creation online full time. Um, but it hasn't really worked out the way I wanted it to. So that's why I haven't had a job in a year and there's a gap on my resume but I've decided it's time to get back into the working world. All right. So, um, so Dan, that's good. Let's, we're going to, we're going to do that again. And you're going to do it this time without telling me your name again. Cause I already knew your name was Dan. And I said, you know, your name, I said, hello, Mr. Norton stuff and all that. Okay. I know you were. And also I don't want you to talk about quitting your job. That's not of interest to me. I just want to know about you. I just want to say, tell me a little bit about yourself. 
tell me about yourself, my friend. Okay. So here we go. So, so Dan, I appreciate you coming in, you know, maybe just to get things started, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, sir, in my spare time, I'm a collector of card games, a player of card games. I do multiple podcasts and videos about card games. I have this one that's a video podcast, and my co-host is this, like, weird older guy, like, really crazy eccentric millionaire kind of guy who just springs random stuff on me in the middle of episodes that I just have to try and deal with on the fly. So I think it's put me in a good stead for dealing with weird situations because he makes some very weird situations. Dan, that was really good. Um, the uh, I, I like the way you just, you know, you just, you had fun with that. And that's, that's a nice thing. And that will allow us to have further conversations. Um, Dan, did you, did you happen to mention in talking about yourself at that point? Uh, I, I feel like I didn't hear you mention anything about your beautiful wife, uh, you know, your dogs. Was any of that in that uh, mentioning at all, Dan, or did I just maybe plug up my ears and I didn't hear it? No, I didn't mention that. I don't know if that's the best thing to mention straight away in an interview, having dogs. and I mean, I assume they know I'm married because Laura would be my emergency contact on my resume and stuff. I think one of the, I think that goes on there. I don't know. No, Dan, it doesn't go <laughs> on there. It's not a school thing where someone's got to pick you up from the health office when you get sick. No, it's not. It's a resume. It says what your jobs are and what you're looking for. And that's the whole thing. That's it. That's all we're doing. So, you know, what you want to say is you just want to say, hey, how you doing? A little bit about me. You know, I'm pretty simple guy. You know, I'm focused on, uh, I'm, you know, trying to do things in an excellent manner. I've got a beautiful wife. I live in a nice home in Ohio. Responsible. You know, if you hire me, what you know, you kind of know what you're getting. I do my stuff. Okay, so we'll continue on, Dan. You're doing a great job, and I think we're going to really help you get a job at some point if we can dye the hair. So maybe grow a part of it back as well, Dan. Um, so I'll continue on. Uh, thank you, Dan. That's appreciate that information. Um, you know, I I know this is pretty standard for uh for interviews, but I'd like you to talk for just a moment, Dan. Maybe maybe a strength or two of yours that you'd like to focus on, you're proud of, and then maybe a weakness or two that you could mention that you'd uh, you'd like to improve upon. Well, my strengths are that I can deal with people who drive me absolutely nuts without snapping at them. I've had a lot of practice with that, as I said, with my podcast co-host and with my wife. And uh, my biggest weakness is that I absolutely hate the job market and never want to have a real job. (laughs) That's my biggest weakness in looking for jobs. (laughs) Dan, I'm I'm not sure that this job is right for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, what, what, job, what job even was this, David? What job was I interviewing for? It really doesn't matter. You didn't get yeah. it. Anyway. So at this point, let's okay. go on. Yes, yes. Um, and, and so, Dan, just maybe just one more question. Uh, and I appreciate your honesty. You know, uh, we don't see such such qualifications like this very often. You You seem really special. You seem like someone that, you know, could really do this job for us. And I'm excited you came in today. Um, so maybe just one more question, Dan. Where do you see yourself with the company in, in say, three to five years? I don't see myself staying at any one company for five years. If I'm still alive in five years, I'll consider it a win. I'm I'm just flabbergasted. <laughs> this is so you guys can see that anybody that chose to stay this far into the podcast, you've made a tremendously poor decision. Just yep. like we would make if we did hire Dan for our company, um, but I just want to thank you for you know going out on a limb and you know maybe just enjoying the moment versus the momentum. Uh, whatever momentum I think we may have created prior to today's podcast, which is our twenty first or twenty second, I have no idea. Uh, it's pretty much gone. Um, but thank you for uh, for staying this long, uh, Mr. Norton. I suggest maybe you look at a different field. This one yeah, appears not to be the best for you, but um, I mean, we, I don't even know what field this was. No, and you probably even... better off that you didn't, my friend. So. Probably, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, Dan, you want to close it out at this point because I've really got to stop. I'm doing some afternoon. Yeah. I'm going to have all you can drink mimosas right now just to try uh, to recover. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. As I say, follow us on the socials and everything like that. And if you have any links to those uh, Asian tournament cards, definitely, definitely message myself or david or just one of the podcast socials and we will go from there with those 
But other than that, we'll see you next week where we're going to be talking about some trophy cards. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Coffee Talks with Dan Norton and David Person, featuring music by More Than Never and artwork by Laura Norton. A special shout-out to all of our Patreon members. Join us again next time. But the want you to...